Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 17 and in this segment we're going to take a look at some more definitions uh, related to weather and climate and also take a look at an overview of what we're actually going to be discover, uh, discussing in the next several segments. So just to sort of recap what we talked about in the first segment, we introduced the definitions of weather and climate. So weather describes uh, short-term variations in the state of the atmosphere or in the state of some physical parameter or some measured value, whereas climate describes a mean state that's taken of a particular parameter or measured value, and we take that mean over a period of several decades, or to some extent even centuries, and sometimes even timescales even larger than that. So now you might be wondering, okay, so weather is weekly at longest weekly variations, and climate is at shortest uh, decades, uh, variations of decades, what exactly, what about the timescales in between that? And that's where we introduce the idea of an oscillation. But first, let's go ahead and introduce the, another definition called a teleconnection, which is typically defined as a causal relationship or a correlation between uh, two or more distant weather patterns. And an example of that would be something that we're going to discuss even even greater detail in the next segment as we talk about El Nino. But one example of a teleconnection would be anomalously warm temperatures in the Pacific causing a shift in the jet stream, and that shift in the jet stream could bring, I'll say, wet weather to the southern continental United States, or if you put that jet stream over the Atlantic Basin, then you could have uh, suppressed hurricane activity, so you may not get very many tropical cyclones forming in the South Atlantic. And that's what we mean by teleconnection. We had some sort of deviation or some sort of weather pattern in the southern Pacific that is in turn causing some sort of influence in a weather pattern that's really far away because the Atlantic Ocean is really far away from the Pacific Ocean. But that's what we mean by teleconnection. Some weather event or some sort of change in the state of the atmosphere happens at one location and that in turn impacts some location that's really far away from where that deviation is occurring. And then the, uh, the idea which I introduced earlier as part of the opening monologue is the idea of an oscillation. And this is where we're talking about times, uh, some sort of variation in the atmosphere that occurs uh, with time scales between weather and climate. So weather at most, we're talking about a time scale on the order of weeks. And then climate at shortest, we're talking about a variation on the order of several decades at the shortest. And then oscillations describe variations that happen between weather and climate. So here we're talking about variations that happen on the order of months, years, or maybe at the extreme cases, a decade or two. and the uh, Most of the oscillations that we worry about happen on the order of months or years, but you can have oscillations that are just one or two months or can even extend over several decades. But uh, the ones that we're primarily going to focus on are going to be monthly and yearly uh, oscillation patterns. And some of the more important oscillations that are present in the atmosphere, uh, perhaps the most important is the El Nino Southern Oscillation or INSO pattern, which happens near the equatorial Pacific off the coast of South America. And that's going to be the main subject that we're going to talk about in the next segment. We're going to talk about what exactly El Nino is, as well as uh, some of the impacts that it has around the globe. But some other oscillations that aren't as frequently talked about, one of which is the Arctic Oscillation or the Northern Annular Mode, AO or the NAM, and that's also going to be a topic that we discuss, and that'll be a topic for the final segment. Uh, we're going to talk about some of these less important oscillations. They're still important in the atmosphere, but they're not as important as, say, El Nino. And another one that we're going to talk about is North Atlantic Oscillation, or the NAO. And then there's another oscillation out there called the Pacific North American Pattern, or the PNA, but we won't actually talk about that. That'll be something that, in fact, most of these oscillations are mostly uh, occurring in the Northern Hemisphere, with maybe the exception of ENSO, which occurs at the equator. But in your later coursework, especially your radiation climate class, which you'll take in your fall senior semester, you'll take a look, closer look at these oscillations and as well as some other oscillations that occur ha around the world, and you'll go into much greater detail than what we're going to go into with this class. And another one that we could talk about, but we're not going to cover in this specific lecture, is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or the PDO. But another one that we are going to cover in this lecture is the Matt and Julie Oscillation, or the MGO, which is kind of an interesting one because it's not a typical uh, oscillation pattern because most of these oscillation patterns have what's referred to as a positive phase or negative phase, depending on uh, the calculated anomaly of a particular state variable in the atmosphere. And in the case of El Nino, the, that particular state variable is usually the sea surface temperature measurements in the eastern, uh, eastern Pacific. And uh, there are other readings that go into this. So for instance, 
the uh, Arctic Oscillation pattern, that has to do with the strength of the jet stream, uh, specifically the polar jet, and the strength of the, and the NAO. The phase of that is primarily determined by also the strength of the or uh, also the strength of the jet stream or the uh, the winds aloft. But uh, what's kind of interesting about the Madden Julian Oscillation is there's no distinguishable positive phase or negative phase. It actually uh, has multiple phases, and usually the MJO has eight distinct phases depending on. Uh, where it is in the world. And we'll talk more about that once we actually get into the final segment. But that's going to do it for the second segment. I just want to introduce some more of those definitions as well as an overview of what we're going to be covering in the next several segments. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment where we're going to start talking about INSO and how exactly that impacts the world and how exactly that arises. So with that, I will see you all there. <laughs>